So the, the reason that I would at least question it, I, I'm not going to push back because I don't think we know. No. Um, but, you know, I, I'm curious, Congressman, what's the difference between this type of chemical weapons attack and chlorine gas? Because we've seen several attacks over the last few months that you know, it's hard to verify any of it because we don't have real eyes on the ground there that can give us good intel. But we certainly see the images and, and the, the symptoms and those sorts of things. So doctors studied those tapes, our intel people study those tapes, and they can somewhat verify what's gone on. But this has been a situation where the line is kind of moving on what they think they can get away with. And do we trust Syria to have given up all of its chem weapons and not to have put some of them in the hands of ISIS? Not only do we not trust that Syria has gotten rid of all of their weapons, we know that Syria hasn't gotten rid of all of their weapons. We know that the Russians are providing the top cover. We know that Iranians have more of a presence. It's been reported some Iranian militants were just killed uh, over the course of the last several hours as a result of a strike. And I do believe that the, you know, the president... From the U.S. Has... or from Israel? Well, well, so the, the, the United States said it, was, it wasn't us. The Israelis haven't confirmed it was them, but they also haven't denied it either. So I don't know who else it could have been if it wasn't Israel. You know, the president was tweeting about this uh, earlier today, weighing in saying President Putin, Russia, and Iran are responsible for backing animal Assad, big price to pay, open area immediately for medical help and verification, another humanitarian disaster for no reason whatsoever. Sick. If President Obama had crossed his stated red line in the sand, the Syrian disaster would have ended long ago. Animal Assad would have been history. And we also heard from Senator Lindsey Graham earlier this morning, Congressman. He was weighing in on how we should be targeting Assad. Listen. I think now he is a legitimate uh, war criminal in the eyes of the international community and that Assad and his inner circle should be considered war criminals, uh, uh, legitimate military targets. If you have the opportunity to take him out, you should. You should ground his air force. You should destroy his air force. The world is watching the president. Iran is watching the president. Russia is watching the president. And North Korea is watching the president. This president has a chance to do exactly the opposite of Obama send a strong signal that there's a new sheriff in town and America's back. Well, a few thoughts. I mean, one is that the United States, uh, we can't do this by ourselves. We don't want the cost in lives, limbs, financially. Uh, there are very wealthy nations in that region. I want to see Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia the Qataris, UAE uh, showing more of a leadership role. Assad needs to go, but he can't get replaced by another Assad. So let's say you're targeting Assad and the people who are around him. Another really important point uh, is, is just thinking long term. We should never send our, our troops into war unless they're sent to win. You send them to win or you don't send them at all.